All right, guys, I just got this in a lock swap, swap with uh, Daz. It's a five pin fab. Now, before I jump into this, let's take a look at this guy. Uh, a couple things about it kind of make me worry. First of all, take a look at this keyway. Now, a lot of you guys say you never break picks, and I break them all the time because this is fairly typical of the type of keyway that I routinely attack. Those that live in my naughty bucket almost have something weird like this. So, you notice that we have some warding in very strategic places here. For example, this is a 10,000 pick from Rare Elements. If I wanted to pick from the bottom, you'll notice that there's a little piece of warding right there that prevents me from doing that. Sometimes you can go up in between the warding, but because of that little piece right there, it's just not going to happen. I can't bend him two times. So I'm literally going to be forced to go from this ledge right here. But again, because we have this like double turn, when I shove him up inside of there, I can get it as far as that first turn. But to get it any higher than that, I have really got to bend the tip of this pick. So there's going to be some metal fatigue in this guy. You might very well see me break this guy today. I don't know. So you got to get around there. Now, if the guys are smart enough to design a keyway like this, you can be sure they took advantage of the bidding as well. So I took a look at this key. And I've got a feeling that almost all of these fab locks are going to have something very similar to this. They're going to put a low cut one right here near the entrance and then probably more one or more high cut ones behind it. And again, because they've designed that keyway to defend pick, def defeat pickers, they've also added in this. So by the time you reach back there, you're probably going to overset somebody up in the front. Let's find out. Let me go ahead and clamp this guy up and let's see if we can get him open or if he's going to live in my naughty bucket for a while. All right, again, there's the bidding and he works perfectly. It looks like a brand new lock. So perfect. I even have a key card with this guy from Daz. I don't know what that hole is. I know someone's going to ask. I don't know. It's in every single one of these. I don't know why they would do that. It seems like that would pre-weaken the key, but that's what we got. All right. Um, because I can't use the bottom of that keyway, I'm probably going to try to use this like that. And let me grab a pick. Because I know I have to go from this corner here, I'm going to start out with a 15,000. I might get lucky, and I don't want to have to risk. I've only got a couple of these 10,000s left from our element. So let's start out with a 15 and see what we got here. So very light tension. It's fab. I can guarantee you there are security pins. So looking for a binder, and there he is right in the very back. Everybody else in the front is springy. So, so far, so good. Maybe we can pick from the back and move forward. Hopefully, we don't overset anything. Having trouble getting him under that last pin. Come on, get back there. There we go. Yeah. I'm going to have to go with that 10,000. So, let's start it out. Start out by breaking my favorite pick. All right, all the way to the rear. No. There we go. Light tension. Got a click. And nothing. Tell you what, I'm, fe I'm feeling a little bit of feedback. So let's, since we just got started, let me go ahead and get a magic marker and let's put an indicator on here. Something over here where you can see if there's a fault set and you'll be able to see hopefully a little bit of the feedback that I get. Let's try that again. Get in there. There's really strong pins. Get in there. This pin's really strong springs, Bill. It is early. Haven't had my breakfast. Okay, there's that same one, and I got a tiniest of fault sets. And nothing else. Get in the back. Come on. This one might very well end up in the naughty bucket, guys. Get by. I'm having trouble getting under the darn pins. Um, let me shove him up with this pick. 
and then I'm going to hold the tension, pull him out, and that should lift that pin just enough, hopefully, to get this underneath him. And the answer is no. All right, this is the perfect mix of paracentric keyway and pinning. And as I said, I think all fabs are probably going to be something like this. I can't get around that corner. All right, so I'm going to try a last resort. And I have no idea if it's going to work. But the fact that you're seeing this video tells me that it's going to work because if it didn't work, I wouldn't publish the video. <laughs> he would just go straight to the naughty bucket. I'm going to take this pick, and I'm going to shove him in there, let, let, let off all tension, and then I'm going to push all the pins to the absolute highest position, just as high as I can get them. And then I'm going to apply very heavy tension on this tensioner to hold everything in place. Then, this is an old uh, speed picker's trick, I'm going to take a rake, and I think the only one that's going to fit in there this morning will be this worm. It's in 15,000, you can tell by the blue handle. I'm going to slide him in there while all the pins are held at the top. And then slowly just kind of rake him back and forth while I slowly release pressure on my finger to let those pins fall kind of at, you know, at their rate of choice. Let's see if I can make this happen. just not going high enough. Oh, okay, I've got a fault set, and, and the pick is stuck. Dang it. All right, um, I do have a backup, and that would be, if you find the right one of these, I'm going to put top of the, I'm going to hold my tension, hold that pick locked in place, put my tensioner in the top. Again, I'm going to put, look how much I'm flexing that. I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to take out the bottom tensioner, and that makes room to move my pick. Hopefully, come out of there. Out. There we go. All right, now, let's see what we got. Since I've got him handy, let's start with him. Okay, tiny click on three. Any click on two, and look at this. I'm getting counter rotation on one. See that? Now the question is, can I raise him high enough with this pick? And I don't know the answer to that. We're going to find out. And of course, with my luck, the one in the very back will then fall, and because everything else is set, he'll be inaccessible without oversetting the ones in the middle. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's set this guy first, and then see what else we got to do. Come on. That's a very deep spool. Come, There we go. Got a nice click. And there we go. Pin four. Yes, baby! All right, that was a last resort, guys. That When you have a, a lock that is pinned like this, and it's literally physically impossible to pick from the rear forward without oversetting the ones in the middle, your only choice is to overlift, and that's exactly what you've seen here. It's a very common technique used on lever locks, but it also works on pin tumblers, as you just saw. Anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. By the way, if you this will be the giveaway this week. If you'd like to have a crack at this fab, I will give him all the keys and, of course, the card that goes along with him. Thanks, guys. All you need to do is navigate to locklab.com, the tribal website, and scroll down in the middle of the page. You'll see all the giveaway buttons Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the one you're looking for is the weekend review giveaway, Purple Band. Just click on it. It'll take you to the registration page. Again, scroll to the bottom, put in a good email address. So if you win, I can get in touch with you, let you know. Put in a username, doesn't matter what it is, and click Submit. When you're done, you'll get a green check mark confirming your entry. Thanks, guys.